Good evening. Welcome to our uh, rules chat here at uh, UK Sailmakers Northeast. My name is Ryan, and we've got the uh, team Chalmer here to uh, walk us through a, uh, a good 26 question um, test that we sent around. Why don't we start with the first slide? We'll dive right in here and uh, start with question one. Does anybody want to volunteer a, uh, an answer to this? Does the boat start racing? At the prep gun. The prep. That's correct. Start racing at the preparatory signal. Let's go to the next one. Yep. When do you start a race? Any any point of the boat or equipment crosses the start line. Anybody disagree with that? Uh, this is one of the changes in the uh, in the new rules. Uh -huh. That it's no longer uh, any equipment on your boat. It's no longer any attachments to your boat, like your bowsprit or anything like that. A member of your crew. It's uh, when the first part of your hull uh, reaches or crosses starting line uh, from the uh, pre-start side of the, uh, of the line. It's the hull now. It's not your equipment. This was one of the Actually, it is the major thing in the new rules is that it's your hull, uh, part of your hull crossing the starting line and the finish line. Any questions on that? So uh, just a question. You mentioned um, the finish line. So the same thing applies when they finish? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so the bow, the bow, when the bow hits the, uh, gets across on a vertical, then it's Finish, correct. If you cross the line the right way, yes, it's the bow, but but actually, it's any part of the hull. Um, and um, these are these are in the definitions now of start and finish, and the, the definitions are found right in the front of the new rule book, and that's where you are. Uh, that's that's where you're learning when to start with those definitions. The, this slide. This picture was taken five seconds after the starting signal. And you notice that flag X-ray is flying from the uh, race committee boat. So who can tell me which boat has started? Or how many boats have started? Only one. Uh, That's green. Two. Green. Two. Who said two? two? I believe the red one started. You don't know that it was early. It, it could have been on time. It was a very fast well, boat. <laughs> with the x-ray flag as the individual recall, yeah, uh, we can safely assume that at least the race committee has decided that red has an unauthorized head start. Red is OCS. Uh, that's what flag x-ray indicates. So in summary, the, uh, the green boat is the only boat the only that has started. Um, red is OCS. Yellow has not yet crossed the line after the starting signal from the pre-start side. So they have not yet started. Um, so red is OCS, green has started, and yellow has not yet started. Um, so we'll go ahead and jump on to uh, question number four here. Has, has red finished the race? No. Yes. A yes and a no. I say yes. Can no. I buy Finished. Yes, they I say yes. Okay. Why? I think she doesn't have uh, any penalty or anything like that. Because the mast, the mast went through the finish line. No, the bow, the bow, bow touched the finish line. Oh, the bow too. Once the bow touches the finish. In its normal position, crossing the finish line. The thing yeah. with the bow is you get these big bow spirits. Maybe, maybe the mast is a better. No. I don't no. <laughs> no. so bow, let's, let, let's let's stop a minute and I mean, yes not decide what we think is best but what the rules say and the, and the definition of finish is that when any part of your hole before cross the finishing line uh from the course side 
So was any part of the hull cross the finishing line here? Definitely. Yeah. And once again, let's start and finish. All right. Any, any questions about that? Once again, definition. Okay, let's move on. So question five builds on that a little bit. It touches the committee boat. Has she broken a rule that she can be penalized for? No, probably not. <laughs> you're not yes. allowed to interfere. You're not allowed to collide with the committee boat. Well, what if it's an accident though? Then and they lose the race. Well, they have to go well, back. They finished. They already finished. Wait a minute. What do you think the rules say? Um, Red has has Red finished the race? Yes, he finished the race, but he hit the committee boat. But wait a minute. Oh, she hadn't hit the, the committee boat yet. The question is, if she touches the committee boat, can she be penalized for doing that? She's finished the race. Question. Um, yes. My understanding of finish is she actually has to clear the finishing area where she is still racing. And yes. I'm speaking as a person who spends a lot of time on RC. I would not qualify this boat as having cleared the finishing area. So I don't know if she touched me, I would consider that a penalizable penalty. Okay, you're absolutely right. Red it has finished the race, but she is still racing. Remember, she start, started racing at a preparatory signal, and she is still racing, even though she's crossed the finish line, until she clears the finish line and the finish marks. Okay, that's the definition of finish. He has to clear the finish line and the finish marks. Okay. Now, um, does everybody understand that? Oh. And the committee, the committee boats have finished mark. So she has, she has to do something to make sure she doesn't touch it. Now, does she have to notice red? Red, red had has crossed the finish line entirely. The entire hull has has crossed the line. Can we go back to the last slide? Now here's red once again, um, and her bow has crossed the finish line. So she has finished. Do we all agree on that? Yeah. Yes. Does she have to continue to cross the finish line? Suppose it was a really strong current and it was only a couple of knots of wind. Does she have to cross the finish line entirely? No. 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 Oh, she could tack at that point and she's done. Say say that again. Tack at Right in that picture, she could tack right there and clear the finish line on um, a port tack and finish the area on a port tack and get out of everybody's way. She could also fall off and go underneath the, the race committee boat's stern. Okay, so she could duck behind the committee boat. She could tack and bear off and go downwind again. All of those things would constitute a finish. But if, now let's move to that slide again. If in this case, that current dragged her into the committee boat, because she is still racing, she can be penalized and she would have to do a penalty turn. You said so, that the red boat had to completely cross the finish line in order to leave, or she could, as soon as she crossed just one part of the boat, she could go behind the line and it would not be a penalty as long as she didn't hit anything. Is that true? That's correct. That's correct. Any part of the hull, the, 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 um, the, the definitions of start and finish are quite specific. They're talking about the hull of the boat, right? And once um, a part of the hull has crossed the starting line, she has start after the starting signal, 
She has started the race, and once a part of the whole crosses the finish line, she has finished the race. Now, she note in this situation, however, she is still racing, and she is not finished racing until she has crossed the finish line and cleared the line and the finish marks. So I have a follow-up question here. Sure. So assume red tax onto a port tack to avoid the race committee boat, but there's a boat upwind of her that is on a starboard tack since they're still racing the starboard boat would have right away over the red boat, correct? Correct. Okay. So generally that's not a good place to be when you're finishing. <laughs> now let's roll on. What's a boat's proper course? The heading toward the mark. Right. Anybody else? Like in the absence of any other boat. Heading to the next mark. Is it the course yeah. she would sail to complete the race as fast as possible if other boats did not exist? That's that's pretty close. This is a definition. Once again, the definitions start on uh, uh, page three of the uh, rule book, and they go through uh, they go through page uh, six, and you you simply have to read them and understand them if you're going to understand the rules. But the proper course basically is the course you would choose to take to sail around the course, to sail the course, first of all, to round all the parts that you're required to do as quickly as possible. I'm paraphrasing there. You really read the definition, but that's what it is. That's the proper course. No, she does not. No, who said no? I said no. Why? So did I. Uh, between her preparatory and her starting signal, a boat does not have a proper course. Right. Absolutely correct. There is no proper course um, before the starting signal. We're going to talk here about the, the zone. Does everybody know? This is another definition of the zone. Who I never heard of the zone. This? Why? What is the zone? Three boat lengths of the larger boat from the mark. Three boat lengths from the larger boat with the mark. Okay. So which so boat? Look, look at this. Uh, look at this picture here and tell us which boat is in the zone. Both of them. Why is it backwards? Neither boat is in the zone. Yeah, neither. Neither boat is in the zone. Why? Because there's nothing in the three times feet. They're so both we've got a... Three, both oh, no, actually, water. you said it's the bigger red, boat, so then both of the them zone. are in. Red is in the zone. Red in the, boat, in the zone? Yes. It's not the bigger boat, it's the nearer boat. Oh, it's the nearer yeah. boat. So then none of them. <clears throat> oh, no, that's right. None of them are in the zone because it was the last person who spoke hit the home run. Um, it's the boat that is nearer the mark. It's three hull lengths of the boat that is nearer the mark. And that's green. So in this case, neither boat is in the zone. Okay. <laughs> so if, if green wasn't there, red would be in the zone, but because green is there, she is not in the zone? That's correct. And if red were ahead of green, if green had moved, you know, was, uh, you know, a half a boat length behind red, then they would, then that changes the scenario as well. So it's, it's three hull lengths of the boat nearer the mark. We'll uh, move on to, uh, Question, this will be question number nine on uh, if you guys are following along on your presentation at home. Is Green entitled to room at the mark room at the finish line in this scenario here? Yes. Yes or no? No. 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 
a lot of no's. Oh, I said yes. No. Yes. I would say no. Why would you I, say I no? He's not overlapped. No overlap. Red, red can't fall off below its proper course. Red, <clears throat> red is clear ahead. Once it once it finishes the race, he's finished. He, 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 maybe he shouldn't be allowed to interfere with other boats. That's right. He has to keep clear. Red's not overlapped. She can do whatever she wants as long as she keeps clear. Red's not overlapped. Red's the windward boat. Right. But there's Red's no overlap. The there, there is no overlap. No overlap at the zone. You see the dotted line on Red's transom is perpendicular to her center line. And green is behind that. So there's no overlap between the two boats. Who's the right of way boat here? Red. Green. Green. Red. Oh. Red. Green. Red. 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 Clear ahead. Red. Reds have it. A lot of reds. <laughs> well, <clears throat> once again, if you look at uh, the, the uh, rules of part A, you'll see that uh, <clears throat> a boat clear, a, a boat clear stern must keep clear of a boat clear ahead. So in this case, because the boats are not overlapped, red is the right of way boat and green is the keep clear boat. So red can sail whatever course she wants until the two boats become overlapped. And if they don't, she can sail the dotted line course here just the way it's shown. And green is not entitled the marker. Okay. okay, I have a question. As soon as as soon as red falls off, he will overlap the green boat. Does that then Maybe. change? That hmm. changes the situation. Well, sure. Do that. <laughs> if, he, if he did, if he did that, um, it would, and the boat stayed in that same. Uh, uh, position relative to each other, yes, it would probably, he'd swing that dotted line, and if he swung the line enough that that it it, uh, it crossed Green's bow, there would be an overlap. And when there was an overlap, once there's an overlap, then Green becomes right away both, and Red must keep clear. Okay. Hey, hey, Butch, I, I don't understand that. I, I thought since Red was clear ahead while entering the zone. Doesn't doesn't she stay the uh, keep clear boat? Oh, the right away well, boat until, a, until right, the, well, that's a different scenario. Different, we we, we were just different. talking about them getting an overlap um, okay. because Red has entered the zone and the boat and she is clear ahead when uh, when she does that. Um, green must give her mark room, okay, and uh, is not entitled to mark room if she becomes overlapped with red. She's not entitled to mark room. Um, but in we, what we were discussing just a minute ago was what would what would uh, what would happen if they did become over, okay. But you're absolutely right. If you look at the um, definition of mark room, it says that if a boat is clear ahead when she enters the zone, the, the boat astern shall thereafter give her mark room. And um, Green is would not be entitled to mark room even if she became overlap. Green's not entitled to mark room. And if Green tried to get between the mark and red, it's a spot she's not entitled to. So I, I'm seeing, I think we're talking two different situations. One is if it's a turning mark, then clearly red has no obligation to give green any room at all and is free to bear, bear off and go around that mark. But at the finish line- There's no zone. There's no zone. Right. Who told you that? The mark has a zone. Once they enter the zone, um, the zone at the green is not kind of Claiming an overlap only applies at the mark. That's what you're saying? 
claiming mark room only applies to the mark. Right. And the 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 oh, mark oh, at oh. the end of the finish line is not considered uh, that's considered a finish line buoy as opposed to a finish line mark is how they define mark it. It's a mark of it's the a mark. mark. Absolutely. I don't believe that the zone applies uh, the same way it does at a turning mark as it does at the finish line. Well, where, where, uh, I'm, I'm not aware. Of, I can't prove it I'm to not, you, but I, I don't think that the, the zone, the three bolt length zone applies in the same way it does at a turning mark as it does at the finish line. In that situation, um, green could get overlapped right up until the last minute he crosses the line. There's no point at which red is in a zone, and then there can be no more overlap, because, as if you were turning around that mark. Well, let, me, let me read the definition of zone. The area around a mark within a distance of three pole lengths of the boat nearer <laughs> to it. A boat in the zone, a, a boat is in the zone when any part of her hull is in the zone. Okay. Um, so there is nothing in the um, in the definition of zone which uh, that de uh, that defines a zone. It doesn't tell you where a zone applies. Rule okay. eighteen doesn't apply at a starting mark, but it does apply at a finish mark. Of course it does. Um, there, there is, there is, it's a mark of the course, like any other mark. And the, uh, the zone exists. And uh, the, I mean, the, the fact is, uh, mark room is appropriate, or lack of mark room is appropriate, depending on, on uh, whether you're overlapped or not. So in this situation, in, in your understanding, as soon as the red boat is inside of three boat lengths, then there, the green boat cannot become um, overlapped. Overlap. Yes, she can become overlapped, but she is not inside, entitled. Inside the zone at the finish line, you're saying, in, because you can't, yeah. you can't tuck up under once you're inside the zone. You have no rights at that point. You're not overlapped. But it was Red's proper course could be. She could sail up there uh, on that on the uh, undotted line, and <clears throat> and finish, and leave room for Green to finish also. No question about it. However, she's not a, not required to do that. Okay. She, if she chose to sail. The dotted line, she's perfectly within her rights to do that. And Green, not being entitled to mark room, would have to drive out and finish again. Or, and finish. Probably finish on starboard tap. Green would have to establish her overlap before the three bow length circle to have any right. Absolutely. Example. Absolutely. Exactly. That's, that's, that's what we're talking about. It's it's exactly the same as mark room at a lured mark or a weather mark or a jive mark. Um, you know, All at, marks at, to three the three boat, at three boat lengths is when your entitlement to mark room is established and it can't change after that. Okay, let's let's go ahead. So we've got uh, we're moving on to obstructions here. Is the anchored power boat considered an obstruction to green? Obstruction being the, the key word here. Yes. 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 No. Why? No. Not yet. Why no? No. Because green is in uh, one boat length from the obstruction. You ever done the Black Island race? <laughs> yeah. And would Black, would you would say that Black Island's an obstruction? Of course. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It's an obstruction when you start the race, even though you're 100 miles away from it. In this particular case, the, de the definition of obstruction 
is simply talking about the relative size of it. And it, what it says is if, if you're within one boat length of it, would it be something that would require a significant alteration, of course, to miss it? That, that, that's the definition. It doesn't mean you have to be aimed at it. And it doesn't mean you have to be within one length of it. It's simply defining the size as if you were within one length of it, would you have to make a pretty good alteration, of course, to avoid it? And the answer here is, of course, yes. So it's an well, obstruction. I have a follow up to that. So Go ahead. the boat itself is an obstruction. I assume the anchor line is also an obstruction. It's part of the obstruction. Right. That's correct. OK. All right. The, where, the, where place does it anchor, the place the anchor line comes into, into, uh, into uh, uh, play is the anchor line on a, on a committee bus. It is not part of the mark. Uh, in other words, if you went back to the, to the, uh, to the uh, slide we had three or four slides ago, when we were worried about a boat touching the committee boat after he finished. In this situation, his anchor line is not part of the mark. If, if he could get by the bow here and just hit the anchor line, but, but not the boat, that's then he hasn't touched the mark. And that's true at the starting point. Okay? Okay, let's go ahead. We got it. So we're uh, on to 11. So All right. Number 11. 12. Now, <clears throat> is Green entitled to room to tack to avoid the obstruction? Yes. Yes. He continues yeah. on his course, he does. Let's look at, at something here that, that's pretty important. It's a pretty important part of the rules. It's not a new part. Uh, it actually changed with the last rules. <clears throat> but um, what, what the, uh, the, the pertinent rule here is rule 20.1, which is entitled hailing. And it says that a, a, a boat um, may not hail for room unless she is an approaching an obstruction, and we, she's certainly approaching an obstruction, and we'll, we'll soon have to make a substantial course change to avoid it, to avoid it safely. Now, would Green, could Green get away with a small alteration of course and miss the uh, uh, obstruction here? Absolutely. Absolutely, it's correct. Yeah, and what what uh, twenty point one uh, really says here, and and this is a confusing part, is that she really breaks a rule by hailing. If you read rule twenty point one, it says she shall not hail, and um, the fact that she hails breaks. Uh, rule 20.1. And red, even though uh, green makes an improper hail here, red must uh, respond to that hail. And can anybody tell me the two responses to the hail? Specific responses. Yeah. I mean, before these rules came, I used to Use sign language. To, to... <laughs> Butch, we can't say it on the, on the <laughs> webinar here. Yeah. One response is UTAC yeah. first. UTAC. That's exactly. UTAC. Yeah. One response is UTAC. And the other response for red is to TAC. Yeah. Correct. And that's your only but the choices. Once again, the interesting thing here is that the rule green breaks is by, she does it by hailing, okay? 
And that, that's something that's very important for you to understand and spend a little time on rule 20, room to tack it and obstruction. It's a very important rule. I have a question here. Rule 19, rule 19 doesn't apply here, which would give Green the option to go either below or above the obstruction? Well, um, she's the right of way boat. Um, it, does, it does not apply here. In, in this case, she, she would need to hail for room to tack in order to, to avoid a collision with red. Do we agree on that? Yes. Okay, so her privilege, if you want to call it that, to go either side of the obstruction, which is what you're talking about, um, in this case would require her to hail for room to tap. The rule says she can't hail if she can avoid uh, the obstruction making a small alteration of course. There's a question from uh, Alec about what constitutes a substantial. Oh, that's that's an interesting. Which is a relevant question. question. Yeah, it's relevant. Right. Substantial is substantial. I mean, yeah. read the definition of substantial. But I think we'd all agree if you look at this uh, little scenario here, green could bear off uh, probably five degrees maybe eight degrees and miss the obstruction. I don't consider that a substantial alteration of course. Okay, all right, let's move on. Let jump on to uh, the next question here. Here we have another one where red could not make a uh, minor alteration of course and miss the obstruction. Is she allowed to hail for room? No. no. Room to tap, yeah. Yes. No. Okay, we have two, one yes and we have two no's. Two no's and a yes. No. No. The committee, vote, the committee vote is not an obstruction. I don't know about you, but it sure looks like one to me. It's, it's a mark and it's an obstruction. The no's have it, by the way. The answer is no, she's not allowed to hail, but for a different reason. It is an obstruction. It's also a mark of the course that Green is fetching. 20.1 says um, she's not allowed to do that. Red breaks the rule 20.1 by hailing. And Green must respond to that hail. And I, the only thing I think she can do to save Red's bacon here is by, is by tacking. But she would tack and then uh, protest red right away. I, I can't emphasize this strongly enough. You need to spend some time on Rule 20 because it, it, I, I, this came about with the last change of the rules four years ago. I thought it was a bad change then, and I think it is now. Picture, if you will, two or three boats close hauled um, and the windward of the green. And green can't tack without hailing them. And, and so the hails get passed down the line and, and a whole bunch of starboard tack boats have to respond because the guy sailing red sailed into Coffin Corner. Yeah, It's a bad situation. But spend some time on rule 20. When, when uh, you, when you quick, quick question on this. Is there yes. any, for, is anything preventing red from basically going head to wind without tacking? No. As right of way boat? Yeah, no, um, but um, there's nothing to prevent him from doing that. And if, it, if he was going fast enough and had enough momentum to get across the bow of the committee boat and not foul, uh, green, he'd be fine. So be it. Sure. Okay. All right. We're going to keep two too long here. Yeah, let's go. 
So is blue entitled to room to tack? Yes, no, and if so, why? Well, can she have for room to tack? Yes. Of course. Yes, yes, of yes. Course. She's entitled. Yes. Well, the, 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 rule, the, the rule once again says she can't, she can't, she shall not hail unless she is approaching an obstruction. Is the beach an obstruction? Hell yes. And we'll soon need to make a substantial course change to avoid it. So um, black and white, of course she can hail here. <clears throat> and when she hails, um, once again, the two, the two uh, responses from red are one to tack and two to say you tack. And then keep clear. And then keep clear. If, if red says you tack, she's then got to give blue room to tack. Questions? So it's pretty straightforward. Good. Let's roll on. So now the scenario has changed a little bit here. Uh, is blue entitled to room at the obstruction here? Yes, no, and why? No. Anybody? No. 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 Yes. No. She can avoid the shoreline. There's no, the there's no obstruction. She can she can bear off and under starboard stern. Absolutely. This is a port star. This is a port star. Nothing more. So this is a little bit more complicated than a traditional port and starboard. Is green entitled to room to tack here with the uh, the dotted line across the screen there is the can start. She, can she hail? Can she hail? Sorry. Can she hail for room? And the dotted line is the starting line. No. No. Why not? No. Okay. Yes. Why not? She's not close yes. hauled. Okay. She's not close hauled. Exactly. That's it. That's it. It's got to be close hauled to, to hail for room. The tack. Once again, rule 20.1. Let's move. Okay. So, lured mark rounding. Here, right hand turn around a, a lured mark. Here is red entitled to room to tack in this situation. Here, no, 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 no. All right. Okay, definitely. Definition of uh, mark room um, the boat entitled to mark room, which is red is not entitled to room to tack unless she is overlapped to windward uh, inside into windward of the boat giving her mark room. And here she's outside into leeward. So, so uh, that's absolutely right. She's not, not entitled to room to tack. So more, more obstructions here. Um, is red entitled to room at this uh, rocky, rocky shoreline here? Um, no. And uh, is a corollary no. which boat is, has the right of way? No. No. She has no, no. overlap. That's right. That's it. She has no overlap. By the way, what is the rocky shoreline? A continuing obstruction. Right on, continuing obstruction. Okay, so let's go to the next step. Yep. So uh, more mark room questions here. Um, is red entitled to uh, to mark room uh, with blue here? Uh, again, another lured mark, uh, right hand turn, uh, and a lured lured mark rounding here. Uh, yes, no, and why? Yes, he's overlapped with blue. No, because it's, yes. she's no because she's more than two boat lengths away. Who just entered the mark? Blue gets to go around, and red doesn't get any room, right? So, is is red entitled to room? Yes or no? I'm I'm not. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Why? Yes. No. She established no. the overlap. 
there's an overlap right now. As there's an overlap right now. Establish it before the two bolt length circle. Three bolt length circle. Three. Yes. Blue just created it. The overlap line from Blue's stern goes out to infinity. There's no there's no distance oh. as far as defining an overlap is concerned. So even though blue is only three lengths from the mark and red is probably five boat lengths from the mark, they're overlap. And if if blue can and, and red is entitled to mark room, if she can get there in time to take advantage of it. If blue can round without obstructing red, she doesn't have to wait. You know, she didn't have to, you know, get in line and let red round ahead of her. But um, red is you know, going she, to have to uh, jive. It's okay. okay. That's, that's fine. She, she's entitled to room to jive, too. The question would be: Is she going to get? Is she going to get to the um, um, mark in time to need room? If she is, it, it's blues obligation to give it to them because they are overlap when when one of the when the first of them reached the zone okay and and in this particular case red's written and blue is running so there's probably a good chance that red's, red's going a little bit faster any questions here Nope, all good. Moving along here. So this is a similar situation, except this time we're at a weather mark. Um, so this is a uh, mark to port here. Um, red is the inside boat, uh, and green is fetching in on starboard. Is red entitled to mark room? No. Yes, no. Why? Why not? Port starboard. Right. Right. Also, so, rule 18, mark room, does not apply um, at a, uh, to two boats on uh, opposite tacks. Uh, opposite tacks. On an upwind, on a beach of weather. On a beach of weather. Right. It's different downwind. Different yes. Down. It is exactly. different downwind. Can, can blue compel red to, to give her space to tack in a situation like this? Yes. No. Yes. yes. The starboard boat, green boat, is an obstruction to a port tack boat. Right on. It's an obstruction for both boats. And um, uh, if you, you read the definition of, of obstruction, um, a boat racing can cannot be an obstruction unless both boats have to keep clear, and they both have to keep clear of uh, of green. So that's ab absolutely right. Uh, how does red's hail from mark room fit into the the situation here? It's, it's a bogus. It's a bogus hail. <sighs> yes, more or less. It's to put to not to put too fine a point on it. It's one of the. <laughs> One of those places where you use sign language. Yeah, pretty much. Or nice try. Huh? Now the <laughs> mark room is, is suspended, right? Uh, uh, as soon as blue hails for room to deck? It's the, uh, well, the, the opposite, uh, boats on opposite boards on a beat to weather. Um, the mark room, mark room does not apply to a uh, boat on port and a boat on starboard when they're going to the weather mark. For our, our previous slide. So. But doesn't it apply between red and blue? What's that? If doesn't rule 18 apply between red and blue? They're on the same pack. Not, um, yeah, they, they, both, they both are required to keep clear of an obstruction. Okay. And uh, green is an obstruction to both boats. So blue. Um, both and both boats are on, on um, um, both boats are on port tack, so um, 
the the uh, uh, rule 18 w does not apply in that particular case no is green here entitled to uh room to start at the committee vote i don't know that we have a uh a time we establish a time for that but a time for what if in the starting sequence well it, it doesn't it doesn't yeah oh yeah i mean she would be entitled if we did let's assume they were let's assume they were approaching the starting line to start is green is green entitled to room here no 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 the preamble to section C of the rule. Um, so um, the, the fact is, it's it's not a mark room. It's not a mark room situation. I would say though that red needs to avoid green, not to make contact. It's not. It's not. Green's not allowed to have room to start, but red can't tag green in this situation. Red has to stay away and then protest. Correct. I mean, rule there's 14. No, there's no rubbing. <laughs> that's what rule 14 um, is is pretty clear on that. You have to avoid contact yeah. if at all possible. And that, now, if they did, if they did have kind, who's a right away vote here? It's red, red, right? Red. Okay, because she's a lowered vote. So if, if they if they did have con minor contact, um, uh, red uh, would not be disqualified under Rule uh, 14 because the, if, if it was just minor contact, if the, the right of way boat can only get disqualified under Rule 14 if there's if yeah. there's damage. Yeah. Okay. So Pretty clear. I think we'll uh, jump on to the next one. Well, this goes right back to our to our uh, our hailing um, uh, conversation before. Uh, since Blue is is fetching the end of the pier, is she entitled to hail Green for room to tap? Yes. 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 That's correct. And the reason is. That rule 20 says she has to um, respond to Red's hail for room to tap. So that entitles Blue to make that hail, and Green must respond accordingly. Yeah, it's going to go right down the line. Yes, yeah. exactly. If you were to remove Red from the scenario, and then no. Then, yeah, and that changes the, uh, the yeah. whole situation. But with Red there, and red not fetching, um, she's allowed to hail, and uh, that hail gets, you know, that's what you're saying, it gets passed, passed down till uh, hopefully nobody runs into the pier. Now, now if, you, if you had a finish line flag on the on the end of that pier, <laughs> um, red wouldn't be able to hail, or or would break the rule by him. We left that slide out. <laughs> Let's go ahead. So uh, this is um, a uh, uh, proper course question here. We got two boats on a down one leg, same board. Um, red sailing with an ASIM, um, established an overlap from clear stern and leeward of green. Uh, both boats are sailing their proper course. Must green respond to red's hail here? So is the uh, is a, an ASIM boat that established an overlap? From clear stern, allowed to uh, head up a symmetrical boat to weather. No, I think it matters yes. when, yes. The, when no. the overlap is made. The if the red and the green boat, if the red tucks right up under green, you know, within two boat lengths, then he can't push green up. But if he if he tacked into that, then he can push green to the moon. As long as red is sailing her proper course. 
Or Green she doesn't sell, sell, evolve her proper course. Greens can sail her proper course. If red comes from behind, you can't take her up. He can't no, but it, it, it's red's proper course that matters, not greens. Exactly. It's red's rule, proper rule course. Rule 17 limits, well, if, you, if she establishes an overlap with green, which she's done here, rule 17 limits her to not sailing above her proper course. But her proper course, because she's using an asymmetrical spinnaker, is higher than, than green, who's using a spinnaker pole and running dead before. So it's a windward lowered situation and green has to respond. The red can't luff green in a situation like that. She doesn't have unlimited luffing rights, uh, but she is entitled to um, continue sailing on her proper course. So if, if, if red, if red um, just flips over on the other board, right? Slides up underneath yep. green and then tacks back over. So he's established an, an overlap, not from clear clear stern. Well, from clear stern, but established the overlap because he switched from port to starboard. I think then red can push green up. That's exactly right. If he gets outside of two boat lengths. Outside of two, that's what I'm saying. That's that's yeah. the key is the two boat lengths. You can't tuck right yeah, up under green and push them. You have to go at least two boat lengths out or or flop, flop it back and forth to get that overlap. And then you can push green up. Well, no, no, green, well, it depends on what you mean by push green up. Then red could luff green. Right. But right now she is capable, she, she is within the rules to continue sailing her proper course. And okay, uh, okay. because it's a higher course, right. green, right as a windward boat would have to respond to that. If they were both, if they were both asymmetrical or they both symmetrical, then that the proper course would be almost identical. But in this case, red has correct. to go way to the right just to go fast. That's correct. That's exactly right. Yeah, I think the important thing is that green doesn't get this is to decide what red's proper course is. No. That's exactly, exactly right. right. And, that's the and, right. and that's, actually that's true if, if the two boats were the same boats you know, in one design sail, um, and the overlap is established that way, it's the lured boat's proper course that dictates where the windward boat's going to sail. If if uh, if the lured boat feels that there's more wind, or that he wants to sail his boat at a higher angle, right. or whatever. Back long as he can establish the fact that it's his proper course, the windward boat um, has to respond to that. <laughs> Good question. In, in a downwind situation on the last slide, wouldn't the red boat be the windward boat since she's closer to the wind? Nope. How, then how are you no. determining which is windward and which is no. windward? No. The, 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 the leeward side of both boats uh, on, a, on a downwind leg, the leeward side is determined by which side your mainsail is on. Okay, so both boats, are on, both boats are on starboard tack and the windward boat is green. So this is, uh, this is a bit of an if then scenario here. Um, so we're approaching a, uh, another weather mark here red tacks into the zone directly in front of green. Um, and green is coming in on uh, the starboard tack ley line here, moving much quicker than red and uh, is forced to avoid. Um, so we'll, uh, I suppose we'll take this in, in two parts. Um, if, uh, what does is, what is red do or what is red obligated to do if uh, green were to sail into position? We'll start with position two. Here. So if uh, red tacks into the zone, green comes in from a stern and that avoids the weapon. Um, what, is, what, are, what are red's obligations in this situation? Maintain its course to round the mark. Take uh, penalty turns. Change yeah. the family. Penalty turns. 
Penalty turn. turn. Exactly right. Penalty turns. If he causes Green to sail above close all, he's got to do, he's broken 18 3, and he's got to do penalty turn. That's correct. And uh, if Green, if Green were to um, put her bow down and uh, and kind of hook Red to lure here, what are uh, what are Red's obligations under those under that circumstance? Give him room at the mark. Give Mark room. Yeah. Mark room. Agree that Green will be entitled to Mark room. Yes. Entitled to Mark. So we're, we're done with this. Got one more. Got one more. Got one more. So this is our last uh, our last question slide here. Um, so uh, you know we're gonna take this. So uh, you know phase one of this scenario is uh, red overlaps lured of uh, of blue inside um, at the beginning of the zone there, and then uh, as the boats progress towards the weather mark. Um, red and uh, what what is her penalty? That's I mean it's that that simple. Red is entitled to mark room. Red no, hits the mark. She's but, but, I would argue yeah. that red hit the mark is a result of not having been given enough room to round the mark. Right. So and therefore, he's exonerated from hitting the mark. Yeah. And I don't know if the, I mean, it's, it's sort of like two fouls, but one sort of um, preceded and caused the next one. And I'm not sure how to unwind those two. Well, she, she Red is sailing in the mark room that she is entitled to. I mean, I think we'd all agree that Blue should be giving Red mark room, and she didn't. So she ended up touching the mark. And as such, she's exonerated. Uh, there's a new rule. They, they change the number. Rule number 43, exoneration. Read that rule, and, and you'll see that it says if you're sailing in the room or mark room to which you're entitled, and you're forced to break another rule uh, by a boat that's not giving you room, uh, you're exonerated. And there's no penalty. There's no, she does not have to spin before, before protest. Okay. So, any questions on that? That's our, uh, our last prepared question slide here. So Can any, you still uh, protest if, <laughs> if you were exonerated? Sure, you can, you can protest. Absolutely. What, what about blue? Should, should she take penalty turns because she broke uh, the mark rule? Well, yes, she yeah. should. Sure, absolutely. Um, we're almost done, but I do want to read a couple of things to you. Do we have a slide? Yeah, that's it. Can we bring that on our next one? So, yeah. um, and and these are my regatta rules. And uh, after a lot of years of experience, uh, I I think they're pretty good. And. They start with read the rules of part two before the regat before you sail a regat. Um, it's only a couple of pages in the rule book, and and you can do that quickly, and it'll refresh your mind. Sail by the rules and insist that the others do as well. Avoid getting protested, tack or duck early. Always give room, avoid contact, do penalty turns when in doubt. Stay out of the protest room. If there is an arbitrator, if you're lucky enough to have arbitration, take the advice of the arbitrator. 50% of those who go to the hearing don't like the outcome. <laughs> those, those are bad odds. Um, and one last thing I would, uh, I would leave you with. If you're having trouble sleeping, um, keep the rule book by your bedside table. And, and uh, in two minutes of reading, you'll be asleep. 
<laughs> but, but that's it, not hardcore. If, if you want to, if you do want to learn the rules and have some interesting readings, I recommend two things. Dave Perry's understanding the racing rules for sailing of sailing and and uh, the appeals book and yeah can we do that this is dave perry's book this is the appeals book both are available from u.s sailing and uh, both are tremendously interesting to reading and one of the beautiful things about dave's book is that as, as he writes his opinions, he cites the appeals. And you have the appeals book right next to you. You can read that appeal. And the appeals are interesting reading because they're, they're uh, actually scenarios of, of things that happen. And uh, you'll, you'll enjoy the heck out of it and you'll learn the rules. And with that, Thank you for uh, your attention. So, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, guys. Thanks, thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. thanks so much. That was thank awesome. You, thank you awesome. Much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you for putting this awesome. together. <clears throat> Tell me, will you be um, publishing a, a written guide uh, answering your quiz? Well, we left that out. I, we did. I, to say absolutely. That. If you will send us. Why? Send us your, your email address. Email, um, and uh, I'm going to be uh, sending out on request um, and only on request uh, the, the answer keys that we've had up here tonight. Um, I'll have those uh, ready to go tomorrow. And uh, you just shoot me an email and I'll respond with the attachment and uh, you'll be good to go. So. And we did cite in the answer, we did cite all the rules. So the rules, the pages for definitions and, and so on and so forth. Um, so this, you know, this is designed to go with the uh, the quiz that you guys had. Um, everything should line up nice, and uh, it should be pretty self-explanatory. So, um, and if you have any any continuing questions or anything like that, you feel free to uh, feel free to shoot me an email, shoot Butch an email. Um, you know, we're absolutely happy to help. Um, you know, answer any questions you guys have, and uh, you know, we're here here to be a resource for you guys. Hey, what's don't, your what's don't your be, what is your email? Um, I'm Ryan at uh, UK Sailmakers dash. <laughs> yes, Dad, I'll go into the room with you. <laughs> so Emma just uh, dropped my email address into the uh, into the chat here. So I guess feel free to uh, grab that and, and shoot me a question or shoot me an email with any question or anything like that. Great, thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks again. So guys. Thanks again. I really appreciate you guys stopping by and uh, listening to what we have to say. So. Case closed. Ready for beer? I'm ready for beer.